What's up, Dorkanas? This is my second card review. This will be for the Amethyst cards. This is somebody that hasn't really seen a lot of these cards yet. Just trying to get a general understanding, you know, like a reference point for what one would see while playing Lorcana. Because I haven't really played it yet. Just getting into it and I just want to know what the cards are like. So this is my the Amethyst. I think that's purple. And so far I've only done Amber besides this one. Uh, so let's have a look at what Amethyst brings to the table. We'll start with the ones and work our way up to the bigger ones. I thought about starting at the top just to see what the power cards are to see if that influences what the smaller cards will be, but I think I'll just start with the lower ones and see what you build towards as you play. Because you need to have the, the early game is much more important than the late game a lot of times anyway. Because if you lose the early game, you don't make it to the late game. So we have Cogsworth here, a 1-1. One, one, one. Time to move it. When you play this character, chosen character gains rush this turn, so he can give somebody else rush. And rush is a pretty good thing, especially to counter early game pressure. So this could be a way to get to play him with a bigger card to give that other card rush. So for such a cheap card that's also inkable, I can see this getting played in a lot of decks because rush is generally a good thing to do because opponents can't really prepare for that rush minion to come out and hit their players. So they might think they're safe and a rush uh, attack comes. So it seems good to me. Already with an item, the Retrosphere. Extract of Amethyst, two ink, and you banish the item. Return chosen character, item, or location with cost three or less to their player's hand. So that's pretty good. You could bounce your own character if you have a powerful action when played. So you might wanna, which, which I recognize as a battle cry. I don't know what Lorcana calls those besides when played this happens or even what that's called in magic maybe that's more of a familiar term but to me it's a battle cry so if you have a, a minion or a character rather that when you play it it does something really good and you want to do that again it's good to have an item like this to get that back in your hand alternatively you could put something back in the other player's hand but probably not worth doing that i can't imagine that being the stronger play especially when that cost you so much because they could just play whatever that item is again. So is it worth this item and two ink to bounce anything back into your hand? That seems pretty pricey. I bet that's too pricey. So I don't think this would get played really. That seems kind of expensive. Magic Broom, a Luminary Keeper. A one mana one two or one ink rather. Nice and tidy. Whenever you play another character, you may banish this character to draw a card. That's interesting. Yeah, it's not a bad thing to do, especially for a low stat and especially for a one. So it's almost like playing oh, playing a one with the intention of using it to draw a card. It, but you'll probably do something with it first. So you'll you know you'll either challenge and maybe get a 1-1 one, one off the board, or your quest and get one lore, and then when you play another character, just get that free card, because this probably isn't sticking around for a long time anyway, so I can imagine that being not the worst play in the world, and probably a good play, you know, getting a card, it's almost like it's paying for itself in a way, right? So I can imagine this being a decent, a decent card, especially for drawing through your deck with a weak card that can probably do something in the early game, so it's probably a pretty decent card here. We have an action, a swing into action even. So for one, this gives a character rush. And they, yeah, so this is another rush move, but this is an action instead of Cogsworth. So this seems terrible because Cogsworth is at least a character with a body and it costs exactly the same, right? It was it Cogsworth. Yeah. Why would you want this action instead of a character that does the exact same thing? I don't understand. That seems way worse. I've got a location for one, Casa Madrigal, Casita. At the start of your turn, if you have a character here, gain one lore. That's pretty simple, and it's only one, so and it's only one to move somebody there, so that's almost getting kind of a cheap lore, especially if you've later in the game, it can give you a little bit of a bonus lore, right? So it's really basic for location, but it's not terrible. But is it worth the card in your hand? I don't know, maybe. It, it's inkable, it's only one. You could get, you know, how many bonus lore are you getting? It's almost what you gotta consider. How many bonus lore am I getting? So it kind of depends on what the deck is. I should probably keep flipping that over and over again. So maybe okay, but probably not good enough. Chernobog's followers, creatures of evil. One cost for a two one. Restless souls, whenever this character quests, you may banish them to draw a card. That's a second card that that gets you a card when you banish. So 
already seeing some decent card draw with Amethyst here, which is interesting, because we didn't see a ton of that with Amber. I don't know who Chernobog is, but this is the second time their name has come up. I think cards like this are pretty good to get that card draw, especially these low cost cards, because you're putting power on the board. You are, you can quest and get that lore when you need it. And because you can banish them yourself to get some card draw, you're kind of controlling your own deck a little bit better. And clearly getting through your deck and getting your cards in your hand is a good thing. So this is almost more of a threat to the other player. No, ignore that part. I kind of think the the two one like the two strength is probably you're not challenging with this card because you're probably wanting the card draw more than you're wanting to do two damage to anything so i wonder how often people play this card with the intention of doing damage probably never but i can see this card being pretty pretty good especially early on to get that card draw and almost it's almost like play a character with the intention of getting one lore to draw a card so if this was just an action that said gain one lore and draw one card, would it be just as good? I guess it'd be slightly less good because it's just not a body on the board that can have a factor on other things, like putting it into a location, for example. So you gotta consider, is that good enough for a card? One lore and draw a card. Probably. Maybe? Probably. And it could attack strength or zero willpower body too. Yeah, I don't know. It's probably good. Diablo, faithful pet. A 1 ink, 2 1. Looking for Aurora. Whenever you play a character named Maleficent, you may look at the top card of your deck. Put it on either the top or bottom of your deck. Without Maleficent being in your deck, this makes no sense. Well, it makes... Yeah, no, it's terrible, right? If this, if you don't have Maleficent, this is a terrible card and you wouldn't play it. With Maleficent, I don't think it's still that good. You're only going to have 4 to 8 Maleficents in your deck, probably. So your likelihood of this being... A good card isn't that great if this card did that action without maleficent it would be fine you'd be able to thin your deck a tiny bit but otherwise this card no way it gets played it's way too specific to be of use and when it's not doing its action it's not good rafiki mystical fighter he's a challenger plus three so he has extra strength when attacking whenever he challenges a hyena character this character takes no damage from the challenge a one ink that can do 3-2 when it challenges sounds pretty good, honestly. That's a big stat line if you don't consider it just having zero strength otherwise. Like, it can't defend itself, but as a challenger, you don't care. That's its whole point is basically to do attacks. The question is, are hyenas strong enough to be relevant to his extra skill of taking no damage against them? And I have no idea. So if hyenas are generally good, and you're probably seeing them regularly enough, then this seems like a good card. It seems like a great card in that situation. I think this is a good card in a normal situation anyway, especially if you have a deck that is trying to control the board. He's going to do a lot of damage and he's got decent willpower for a one cost. So Rafiki seems like a solid early game card to get out there. We got one cost action, bestow a gift, Move one damage counter from chosen character to chosen opposing character. So heal one, do damage to one, assuming you have a damaged character. So if you don't have a damaged character, you can't do anything with this. And it's only one damage, so it's not a huge swing turn or swing move. And it's a specific situation that may not be happening. This seems very odd. It seems weak and probably a card you don't really want in your hand that often. So I don't think people play this card. Here is a song, a one cost song. Draw a card, then choose up to three cards from chosen opponents, discard and shuffle them into your deck. That's crazy, you're stealing cards. You just, and then at the end of the game, you don't tell them that, that you did this, right? And you just run out the door with their three cards. I'll take your three most expensive cards, please. This seems, okay, so I was talking earlier, is like one lore and one ink worth, you know, drawing one card and getting one lore for one ink from that character. Is that good enough? This is draw a card for one ink and then add three cards from your opponent's chosen. The only way this would be good is if your opponent is playing a deck that takes cards from their discard 
So you could take their better cards to disable them from taking those cards back out of their own discard. Which is such a specific card to have in your deck that there's no way people were playing this card. It's it's such a sh strange, it's strange to me that this is a card. So I don't think people are playing it. Chip the Teacup, a gentle soul. A one cost, two, two, that doesn't do anything else. So probably not good enough. Here's another action. I'm stuck, a one cost. Chosen exerted character can't ready at the start of their next turn. Probably not doing enough. If this was a character's action, it might be more relevant as a slowing down the game sort of play, or to really target a strong character who you don't want to re-exert on their next turn. But as an action, I can imagine this card being in your hand for way more turns than you'd want it to be even when you don't have a relevant target. So I don't think this would get played. Here's our first uninkable, a one cost croquet mallet and it's an item hurtling hedgehog banish this item chosen character gains rush this turn so you're kind of keeping a rush action in your pocket i don't think this is worth one i don't i think i think the problem with this item is that it banishes itself so you have a one use item it might as well just be a card in your hand as an action right other than getting other than like having item synergy with other cards but just to give a character rush when again we've already seen character cards that give other characters rush having a uninkable item do that doesn't seem worth it it seems on honestly odd i think you'd rather just continually have that cogsworth that gives a character rush rather than an item that does especially a one use item at least make it two uses or something make it a little stronger archimedes highly educated owl he's a one two two again doesn't have anything else going on so unlikely to be a, a good a good card in the deck kind of want to see them do something here's our maleficent a one 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 uninkable two lore you're probably playing maleficent because there's clearly synergies with other cards and she's going to be a shift target as well and this is a very cheap card so you're probably uh, it's a one it gets too lore but you're probably not this is like a setup card surely so you're using maleficent for all the synergies rather than as a lore getter so as weak as this card is i think the surrounding deck build is what makes this probably a must-have card for some decks Olaf Friendly Snowman, he's a 1-3, so that's very basic, but I know Olaf is also a shift target, and I think he has synergies with other Frozen characters, so probably a better card than the stat line would indicate. But if if not, not really much of an anything card here, right? Pascal, Rapunzel's Companion, well, that's very... he's his own guy, right? Just Rapunzel's Companion, wow. He's a 1-1-1-2, one, 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 or just, just 1-1-1 one, one, one as well. Camouflage. While you have another character in play, this character gains evasive. That's a bit interesting, but that's pretty weak because some characters just have evasive, so he needs somebody else to be around to be invasive. And it's almost like, why? He's just a 1-1 one, one with one lore. Uh, I believe Pascal does have synergies with other characters, so he might be possibly stronger because of that. But if this was just a card that didn't have any synergies with anybody else, this card would be terrible. Uh, but because I'm pretty sure characters need Pascal around to be better cards, him being evasive might be good in that situation too, because if, it, if the bonuses are really good and he can be kind of evasive and not threatened, then, you know, even better. But I think we'll have to see what the other cards do with Pascal to see if this very weak card is worth having. A bit like Maleficent, really. Uh, Befuddle, we got an action here. Return a character or item with cost two or less to their player's hand. Another bounce card. What was the other one? So this is a one cost. I feel like, wasn't the other one almost exactly the same? Yeah, the other one was this, which for one, it's an item. You can keep using it. So I guess that's the good thing. Uh, and this is for a three cost. A bit similar to the Retrosphere. I think actions, man, I feel like you'd rather have these items and these characters with these powers rather than an action so unless you really have a deck that 
really wants a lot of things that are returning to your hand, cards that are returning to your hand. These cards seem, especially as an action, it seems a little bit worse. I mean, it's cheap. The the Amethyst, whatever, Retrosphere costs two ink every time you use it. Oh, no, it's a one use, too. So, yeah, that seems bad. So maybe this is better just because it's cheaper. So, bounce decks, there must be a bounce deck going on with Amethyst that these cards are good. So, we'll see. Reflection, a song. Look at the top three cards of your deck. Put them back on the top of your deck in any order. So this is just setting up your next turns. That might be okay. That seems that seems better late game than maybe early game where you're, you're always just drawing whatever and playing it usually. Later on that would can really set up the turns you're going to make a little bit better. It seems a bit weak. If it did draw you'd probably be a lot happier but that might be too powerful for a one cost. So it's really about is setting up your next plays worth one cost or not because you can sing it. So maybe. And especially if you can draw a lot, then this is a little bit more cost effective, I think. So I could see it being good enough to play in some decks where you're probably moving through your cards a little bit faster and you definitely want to have those next plays sorted for yourself. And that was it for ones. It didn't feel like a ton of ones. Looks like there's a lot of twos though, so let's get started. Here's another Maleficent, a 2-2 two -two with two lore, a two cost. Again, is that better than the one, one, one? I'm not sure. It's it's inkable, so it must be slightly worse, right? But again, I'm guessing this just targets and synergies for other cards because otherwise it's not too special of a card. The two lore is at least a little bit better, but that stat line, you can get a one ink two two for that strength and willpower, so not special. Again, this is just a synergy card, right? Hypnotic strength and action. Draw a card. Chosen character gains challenger plus two this turn. So you get to draw a card, so that's fun. And then if you have a character on board, it becomes a challenger just for this turn. So that's okay. Probably not great. I think at least these action cards are getting you draw a card. So obviously Amethyst likes to get through their deck a bit more than Amber did. And that challenge, giving a character challenger is so specific. It's hard to make that, it doesn't make me think that that's worth a action card, you know, a card in your hand to do that. I don't think so. At least it draws a card, so it's not too bad. But I think maybe it's just the ink cost is too much for what you're getting because, you know, you're drawing a card, but you are using this card. So this card's in your deck. In a sense, it's mostly being used as a challenger because you don't just want to have a card in your deck that just draws another card. There's no point to have a card in your deck that essentially doesn't do anything besides draw another card, right? So is the bonus of the challenger 2 with it? Not really. It doesn't seem that good. Another action. This one's uninkable and it's just gain two lore. Okay, that's interesting. I think when I'm thinking of these other cards that are just drawing a lot of cards, that this makes it seem this actually makes this a little bit stronger because if you're getting through your deck, especially later in the game where two lore is probably not much of anything to you, you just you're drawing cards, you're playing these cards to get easy lore that's unchallengeable, right? And then you're almost like building your point total that way rather than the normal way of of questing with cards so I can I can see a deck where this is a good card especially in decks with lots of card draw which is what Amethyst seems to be doing so far. Amethyst Chromacon this is an item and you exert it for each player may draw a card. See again another card draw so very interesting and like I said with that last deck if you've got a lot of low cost cards that you want to churn out having an item like this puts cards in your hand like the downside is it puts card in your opponent's hand as well but that may not be a terrible thing it might be it's not great but if your deck is more tuned towards getting through your deck than theirs is then this is an advantage for you so if you're building a deck that wants to draw a lot of cards you're less worried about your opponent drawing lots of cards too because they might not necessarily want to they might have loads of big minions that they can't play and so just filling their hand up with big minions that they can't play isn't a big deal when you're not worried about that sort of gameplay you're maybe drawing lots playing lots of actions playing items playing small minions and they're playing one card at a time regardless of how many cards they have in their hand so this seems like a pretty good card in my opinion magical maid feather duster a two a two 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 nothing special here and especially when you have maleficent who has the same stats and definitely has synergy with other cards. I don't think 
There's a lot of synergy here with Magical Maid, the Feather Duster. So why would you play this card instead of Maleficent? You wouldn't. Pico, helpful toucan. He is a two, he's a three, two, and one lore. That seems like a pretty weak card to me. Probably not getting played. Ursula, first Ursula I think we've seen. Mad Sea Witch. She has a challenger plus two, so just another challenging card. So she'll mostly be like a three, three. So that's six stats as a two. That's probably pretty good for a aggressive deck that's trying to clear the board a bit. And Ursula probably has shift targets, probably has synergies with other cards. Probably gets played. Yin Sid, powerful sorcerer. Oh, he's making butterflies. Whoa, calm down. Two ink, one three. Timely intervention. When you play this character, if you have a character named Magic Broom in play, you may draw a card. While you have two or more Broom characters in play, this card gets two extra lore. So you, is this a Broom deck? You must need some Brooms in your hand and then in play for this guy to do anything besides be a 2-1-3. So depending on how good the magic brooms are, if, if they're playable, he might be playable. If they're not playable, he wouldn't be playable. So it depends on the synergy. Also, I don't know if, how many magic brooms there are, if there's just one card that's magic broom. Here's an action and a song, Poor Unfortunate Souls. Return chosen character, item, or location with two costs or less to their player's hand. So another bounce. This one's at least a song, so you could do it for free. But yeah, it's just a bounce, so it probably can be good. But we'll have to see if the actions and song bounces are as good as just having a character with bounce on it. Because you can't have too many cards that just bounce uh, characters back into your hand or their hand but I feel like you're probably not dying to bounce enemy or opposing opponents characters or items into their hand because they'll just play them again. Mystical Rose. Two cost item. Dispel the entanglement but you banish this item. Chosen character named Beast gets two lore this turn. If you have a character named Bell in play, move up to three damage characters. Counters from chosen character to chosen opponent character. Very specific circumstances need to make this character, this item do anything. At least it's an item so you can play it and leave it on the board until these things happen. Let's see, is, the, is this worth the Beast getting an extra two lore? I'm not sure. So far we haven't had a beast yet, so I'm not sure what his cost would be. The bell thing, probably less likely to happen. You might have a character with some damage on it that you could use to put on another character. And three's a decent number that's going to kill a lot of the earlier characters that get played. So, hard to say. Such, such specific items, you know, I wonder how consistently you can get use out of them. It really depends on whether or not they're worth playing regularly. Rose Lantern, Mystical Petals. So you exert and pay two ink. Move one damage counter from chosen character to chosen opposing character. That seems a little bit stronger than what one of the, the other one. I think there was another item or at least an action that was just a 1-1 one, one switch, right? Something like that. And this seems expensive though because you're already paying two and you're paying two ink whenever you want to use it and you're just doing a one heal one damage swap that's not huge that's not a lot and so i wonder if it's worth the two four six you know all that ink cost to do so such a little action i'm not sure if it's worth it triton's trident it's kind of hard to say it's an item symbol of power banish this item chosen character gets plus one strength this turn for each card in your hand a lot of these items are getting banished in this deck this seems like a pretty good thing. It's obviously a powerful action. The problem is you can only do it once. It's going to cost you two, and you're probably removing one minion with it, right? You might be doing a, a powerful challenge, but then that's it. So, And you're probably also losing your character in the trade, I would imagine, because you would probably want to do this to your weakest character that you're not as upset about losing. So you might be able to take a huge character off the board, lose one of your own characters, and you're paying two for it. So it might be a decent trade to make sometimes, because some cards are just straight up removal and they cost more than this, you know, in the range of five. So I don't see this being terrible, but it is, again, 
maybe an item that you don't use in the game or you don't use it in a way that's like super effective. So I'm not really sure. It might be too specific of a use for the decks that you're seeing, but it might be all right. Lena Saberwing, a rebellious teenager, a two cost one three and just has rush. A one three with rush isn't that great. You'd probably want her to do a little bit more damage than that because it's almost like, well, you're rushing to try to clear the board. Are you even clearing anybody? You're probably taking more damage than you're dealing with a 1-3, so it doesn't seem very strong. Magic Carpet, a 2-2-1, two, two, evasive. Find the way, exert to move a character of yours to a location for free. That seems like a pretty good, well, you know, actually, probably not that good, because you're probably setting your Magic Carpet up to just die because now it's exerted it. Well, it's evasive, but that's not the most protective thing in the world. And all you're doing is playing the magic carpet. And if your intention to play a magic carpet is to move a character to a location, if this magic carpet can't stay alive, then it's, it's maybe doing that once before somebody kills it. So you're probably better off just paying whatever the cost of the location move is, unless, because they're usually pretty low, like one to two to three, right? So are you going to pay two? for this magic carpet to do it. Again, like it being a card is a cost in itself. So I don't think that that magic carpet is strong enough to see play. Magica Dispel, ambitious witch, aren't we all? Two cost, two, three, and it. So unless there's any synergies, this card is just not strong enough to be played. Pua, what is Pua from? A pot-bellied buddy, two, Ink 2-2, two, two. always there. When this character is banished, you may shuffle this card into your deck. Why? Why would you want to? I don't see the point. Uh, unless there's synergy, that seems pointless. The lamp item, two cost, uninkable. Good or evil? Banish this item. If you have a character named Jafar in play, draw two cards. If you have a character named Genie in play, return chosen character with cost four or less to their player's hand. This seems good. The fact that it's like, it's like a two cost draw two with Jafar, which is good. And a lot of these decks seem to be wanting to bounce people, so I'd imagine maybe Genie has some bounce effects too. So there's so many cards that are bouncing cards in your hand, I'm guessing that having another bounce card potential is just good. So that the flexibility in this card seems pretty good because both those actions are probably something you want to happen. And if you do, you probably have cards, you have Jafar and you have Genie in your deck if need be for this item to activate. So it seems like a good card. I bet this gets played. The Sorcerer's Hat. Incredible energy. Exert this and pay one ink. Name a card, then reveal the top card of your deck. If it's the named card, put that card into your hand. Otherwise, put it on top of your deck. That is crazy. You've got like, you start with 60 cards. You're gonna name a card and then get like, hope that it's there for one ink. That seems wild but kind of fun, so. But I bet people, do you play that? Maybe, it's just an item, so it's not that big of a deal. At least you don't have to banish it. So it's just kind of like, worst case scenario, you're paying one ink to see what your next card is. Best case scenario, you've guessed the right card and you get, you're paying one ink to draw a card. And the, the later in the game you are, the less cards you're going to have, so you'll be a bit more accurate with your guesses at least. You'll at least have better probabilities for a blind guess. So late in the game, this seems pretty strong early on it's less strong but if you've got ink to spare you can always just check out your next card so this seems like a fun card and also probably reasonably strong we have another location this is forbidden mountain a 1-6 just looks like it gives you a lore bonus which seems a bit weak to me that's probably not good enough to make a location i haven't seen a ton of location synergy besides the rug so i'm not sure if these locations are strong enough to get played when they don't really do a lot so far. Blue Fairy, a two cost one one with evasive though. Ethereal Glow, whenever you play a Floodborne character, you may draw a card. So I think the Floodborne are not just solely shifts, but ones that are, are they? Are they just shift? I don't actually know. So depending on how many, so depending on how many Floodborne characters you have in your deck, this could be a pretty big draw engine, right? Maybe I don't understand Floodborne well enough to know how many you would have in your deck or not, but if you had four to eight, this card could just chill on the board kind of like an item and just regularly draw cards whenever you play a Floodborne. 
So I can imagine this being good because it's just, it's hard to kill. You probably need to use an item or an action to kill it if they don't play it, which they probably won't. This doesn't do any very much besides its power of drawing cards. So you would want it to draw cards so you wouldn't be using it to attack or even quest. So it would just sit there and draw cards throughout the game, I would guess. Plus in a deck where you want to go wide, having like an evasive like this that has such a strong power would be really good. Got a hey hey persistent presence to ink to one. He's back. When this character is banished in a challenge, return this card to your hand. That sounds great. It's very, I mean, it's called persistent, perse persistent Presence, which is what it is because you can continually put this card back into play as long as it's the one dying. So if you had one or two of these guys, you would just always have plays to be made with characters to constantly be questing, I suppose, because otherwise there's no reason for you to challenge and then lose this card. So that seems like an interesting card. I mean, it is weak, but it has such a strange has such a unique power here. I can see it being a strong card in some of these decks that want to just constantly be putting pressure on the board and on the game. So seems good. Jiminy Cricket, Pinocchio's Conscience. He is also evasive, a two ink, one two. That's still small voice. When you play this character, if you have a character named Pinocchio in play, you may draw a card. Okay. This is sort of similar to some of those other ones that are if you have X than this. Well, if you don't have Pinocchio in play, this card sucks. So probably too specific to be played, especially if you, if the Pinocchios aren't good, right? And you wouldn't even want to put them in play. Kuzco, Wanted Llama, 2 ink, 1, 2. Okay, where am I? This character is banished. When this character is banished, you may draw a card. Another one of those simple uh, card draws. I think he's a shift target though, but you wouldn't want to shift him if this is the power you want. So I'm not sure. This might, this seems weak to me. Some of these, when banished, draw a card. They don't seem bad, but they aren't really progressing. Probably a strategy you want to do, unless you're just really wanting to draw cards a lot. But at some point, you've got to have cards that are good to play that aren't just drawing you cards. You can't just draw cards and win the game. You need to draw cards and have a game plan that requires you to draw those cards. So I guess at some point we're going to see what that develops to. But right now I'm not really sure. So I'm not sure how strong this card is because it's so weak otherwise. So I don't know. This seems too weak for a two cost with compared to some of these other two costs that we've seen. Madam Mim, two cost, three three, which is pretty strong. Just you wait. When you play this character, banish her or return another chosen character of yours to your hand. I have seen this character and I have seen that they are in some strong decks, some strong bounce decks, and Madam Mim is an important part of that. So, you know, I know this card gets played, so I know it's good. Uh, I think that this, this was so confusing the very first time I saw it, banish her or return another character. So I just can't even imagine playing a character that you immediately banish, but it, it's basically, this is in your hand until you have a character that you want to bounce, right? So it's almost so strange, such a strange wording to me, I guess. Merlin the squirrel. Apparently, <laughs> like a little squirrel. The two cost, two one. Look before you leap. When you play this character and when he leaves play, look at the top card of your deck. Put it on either the top or bottom of your deck. So again, we've got another one of, there's been a few of these sort of check your next card. And it, this one actually lets you, you know, if you don't want that card as your next draw to get rid of it. And it's also, he does it twice, right? When you play him and when he leaves. So if he gets banished, you do it. Or if you bounce him, he could also do that exact same action. So. Is that action strong enough for a 2-1 with one lore? Probably not. Even if he does do it twice, it might not... I don't know. I just don't feel like that's like the strongest play in the world, especially in this Amethyst deck that has so much card draw that just checking the next card in your deck, it doesn't seem super, super strong. And he might be shuffling it out of your hand or out of your next draw, rather. But is that strong enough for this little guy? I'm not sure. I think he might be a shift target as well, so that might add a little bit of strength to this card. But just looking at this card, I'm not sure if I if I love it. Here's our Pinocchio, our first Pinocchio. Uh, star attraction at uninkable 1-1 one, one with three lore. Well, so I was wondering how strong that, that Pinocchio would be with the Jiminy. Is a 1-1 one, one with three lore worth a two uninkable? I don't, 
I don't think so. Didn't we have a 1-1 one, one that was like 2? And that was on, like that Maleficent, right? Maybe Pinocchio is just super strong. I don't know. I don't... To me, this card doesn't seem good. <laughs> Unless Pinocchio is like a big target for shifts or something. Or he's got more synergies than just that Jiminy Cricket song. Uh, but I feel like playing this... You're just getting three lore, and then Pinocchio's dead. And he's dead easily. Just a 1-1. One, one, almost, literally, almost anything can kill it besides something that doesn't have any strength. So this seems weak, and it makes me think that he must have way more synergies, because a two-cost uninkable for this seems like a lot. Is this another Pinocchio? <laughs> okay, another Pinocchio. is just n nothing but Pinocchios now. Also uninkable. What's with Pinocchio? Also a 1-1. One, one. Talkative puppet. Telling lies. When you play this character, you may exert a chosen opposing character. That can be pretty strong, especially for people trying to protect certain characters, maybe not playing them because they have such good synergies with other cards. This could be a way to force them to get challenged. And there's been some other Amethyst cards, you know, the challenger cards that would be good in that sort of situation. So uh, this being like a disruptive card, I can understand being it being strong. It's uninkable again, and as a 1-1, one, one, just with one lore, you're, is this power that strong? Or are the Pinocchio synergies that strong? And I'm seeing how this is another uninkable, I'm having a feeling that these Pinocchios have strong synergies with other cards for these to be so expensive. I mean, two, it's two, right? Two unequal is not the worst thing in the world. And this is a pretty strong power, but it's just almost like kind of strange to see back-to-back -back, uh, Pinocchio un uninkables. It makes me think that he's maybe stronger than I'm guessing. Legend of the Sword and the Stone, an action slash song for two cost. Chosen character gains challenger plus three this turn. I feel like when I was going through the yellow deck that I just kept seeing support 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 and i feel like amethyst might be challenger 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 so i'm wondering how strong that would be is this card strong enough to be in your deck just to get challenger plus three probably not that doesn't seem strong enough to be a card by itself i think you'd rather see that sort of stuff on a character so i don't think this is a good card perplexing signpost an item to wonderland banish this item return chosen character of yours to your hand just another another bounce and this is any character so a lot of them have had uh, ink like two, two or less or three or less so bouncing any character is way stronger than those ones obviously because this could be you know four five six seven eight back in your hand if those have strong actions when you play them then it's good to have them back in your hand to play them again so uninkable or not i think with all these there's clearly some bounce synergies going on so i can imagine this being a very good card dr facilier a charlatan uh, he's a two ink zero four but he has plus two and challenging so he's a bit weak when he after he challenges but a two four for two that's probably not strong enough if he was a three cost two four without even that challenger he would probably be okay so just this little bit of ink reduction for him to be strong when challenging not sure if that's strong enough but we haven't seen a ton of low cost characters that are just getting out there to fight the other side so far so maybe he's a, maybe he's decent just because there's not much competition for his type of play but it doesn't seem that strong magic broom bucket brigade a two ink two two sweep when you play this character you may shuffle a card from any discard into its player's deck that seems okay it seems probably good for you Obviously good for you because you can get a good card out of your discard back into your deck. I don't know why you would shuffle an opponent's card into their deck, but maybe there's a reason to. I guess you could shuffle their worst card back into their deck, but I would imagine 90% of the time it's better for you to get your own cards out of your discard back into your deck. And we know that this has synergy with that wizard guy, so it's not a terrible card. It seems pretty good to average around there so maybe it's worth it i like it has a broom tag a gizma yizma isma i don't know alchemist a two ink two two you're excused whenever this character quests look at the top card of your deck put it on either the top or the bottom of your deck so that's kind of similar to that merlin except it's only once and it's a bit of a stronger card than that merlin was i think he was just a one one right or was he a one two Again, I don't know if this action is really worth doing, and there's so many cards that seem to do something similar that there's probably stronger cards that you can rely on for this sort of thing to go on. 
than this one. I don't think these are strong enough. Got an uninkable two cost action freeze to exert a chosen character, opposing character. I don't think you'd play this. You have that one character that does this. So why would you play, you know, that Pinocchio does this, right? So why would you play this action instead of that Pinocchio? I don't understand. And it's uninkable. So you might not need to ever do this action and you can't do anything with this card at all. Besides waste it at some point to get it out of your hand because it's annoying you so much. So I don't think this card's good enough. Magic Mirror, an item. Cost two uninkable. Speak, you exert it and pay for it to draw a card? That seems like a lot. Is that not a lot? Like, yeah, you have reliable card draw, but it's four ink after you've already paid two? That seems like a ton. Especially when there's so many of these cards seem to have card draw already. I guess you could continually draw a card reliably with this one, but you'd have to have a huge ink reservoir for this to be reliably playing those cards each turn, right? To, to pay four and then still have enough ink to play a card? I don't know, that seems like too, too expensive, but I might be wrong about that, but it seems too expensive. Ursula's Cauldron, another item for another two uninkable. Peer into the depths. You exert this and look at the top two cards of your deck. Put one on the top of your deck and the other on the bottom. This seems much better than those other cards that are doing this because it's an item. You can do it every single turn after you've put this down. It's only two ink uh, uninkable. And if you wanted to do these sorts of plays, you would do it with this item more than you want to do with those other ones. I mean, you might draw two really good cards and have to put one on the bottom of your deck, but this would be a really good way to... You're basically drawing two cards and picking the best one for your current situation, right? Because then you'll draw it the next turn and have it. So you, you would put this item down and play it every single turn. So it seems really, really good, really strong, I would imagine, especially if this is an effective tactic, which it is. There's no denying that that's a good thing to do when you're playing, if you have the ability to, obviously. Onto the threes. Archimedes, exasperated owl. A three ink, two, two. He's evasive, and that's it. He has two lore, so if they don't have an answer to your evasives, he could be pumping out lore unchallenged, but I feel otherwise he's just a bit too weak here. You run into a deck that has answers for evasive, stronger evasive cards, and he doesn't really get you much besides probably that first two lore and then he's dead, right? So probably too weak. I don't think evasive is strong enough to really have a weak character out there just to try to steal lore without being challenged. I think people probably have answers for evasive characters. Gale, Wind Spirit. Oh, which, where, where's Gale? Where's Gale? Uh, three ink, one, two, recurring gust. When this character is banished in a challenge, in, challenge return this card to your hand. Uh, and it's a two lore, so it's similar to that character that was two, whichever one that was. Uh, the Hey Hey, I think. Yeah, Hey Hey. So this is better. Obviously, it's going to get you two lore instead of Hey Hey's one. I mean, it might cost one more, but if you can, like, constantly be pressuring with these cards, that seems pretty good. I can imagine a deck built around these sorts of cards where you're just constantly playing them. They get banished, you constantly play it, put it back out, put it back out. Could probably be pretty frustrating. It might be a bit weak and a bit too slow to just be relying on those characters, but at least you always have characters that you can be playing and uh, doing things with. It's very weak though, one, two. It's not really doing anything besides this lore creep, so it might be weak, but I can probably imagine people playing it and trying to those strategies out, but probably too weak because it's kind of a bit obvious, right? And it's a bit slow. It doesn't seem terrible. It's probably terrible. White's Rabbit's Royal Herald, a three ink, three four with nothing else going on, so probably not getting played. Here's another Maleficent, a vexed party goer. <laughs> She's like behind the red line, sad times. Three ink, zero four though. What an awkward situation. Whenever this character quests, you may choose and discard a card or re oh my god, oh, let me retry. Whenever this character quests, you may choose and discard a card to return chosen character, item, or location with cost three or less to their player's hand. So, an right, another bounce. When it quests, you may, okay, I need to re read this like 10 times. You may choose and discard a card to return chosen character item. So it's just a bounce? Is this worded differently than these other ones that's like blowing my mind here? Oh, okay. No, what's, what's happening is you choose and discard one of your cards in your hand 
to bounce an item. That's what the thing is trying to say that I am struggling so much with. So it's another bounce card, but this one has even more of a requirement besides just Maleficent being on the board because it's like a quest. So you can quest and then say, I want to get rid of this card to bounce one of my characters back. That seems, whew, that seems like it can be a big sacrifice to be constantly, just because you want to quest and bounce a character to get rid of a card in your deck when it, there's been so many cards that just bounce without that sort of punishment. And I'm kind of surprised we haven't seen a Maleficent shift. It's just been the small cost Maleficence. So this one seems a bit, I don't know, it doesn't seem that good to me. These bounce targets, once we see these bounce targets, they must be amazing because there's been so many ways to bounce them so far. But I haven't seen any of, those, of these like amazing actions when played yet besides looking at the top card of your deck so far. So uh, this one's iffy to me. I guess I would have to see the deck that it fits into perfectly. We have an Anna or Anna, Eager Acolyte, an Uninkable 3. She's a 1 3. Growing powers. When you play this character, each opponent chooses and exerts one of their ready characters. So that's one of those similar to those other characters that exert a character, but this one the the opponent gets to choose, so it's a little bit weaker because they're going to choose the one they're less concerned about, right? So I'm not really sure that that's strong enough, especially for an uninkable three with such bad stats otherwise. It honestly seems like they gave her a weakened power and I don't know why. What happens then? Like she doesn't challenge it so you need to have like a strong character on board to take advantage of that exerted character. So it's almost like a two cost or like a two card combo but you need the other card for her to be of any use. Otherwise she's, she's an expensive 1-3. So, not good enough, surely. We know the way. Three cost song. Shuffle chosen card from your discard into your deck. Reveal the top card of your deck. If it has the same name as the chosen card, you may play the revealed card for free. Otherwise, put it into your hand. So, another one of these weird gambling cards, which I kind of like. So, worst case scenario, you are still drawing a card with this. So, this could be a song free card draw. Best case scenario, you happen to get the exact same card, <laughs> the same name, right? And then it, you get to play it for free. So there's a high roll potential in this. Uh, and depending on what card you pick from your discard deck, it could be a huge high roll. So you probably would pick a, a big card, right? Because if you do get it, then it's playing a free big card for free. So that might be good. It might be pretty good. You're still getting a free card. Well, it's not free, but if you sing it, you know, you're drawing a card and getting a strong discarded card back into your deck, which might be a good thing too. So it seems good. Magical Aid, a three card action. Chosen character gains challenger plus three, and when this character is banished in a challenger, turn this card to your hand this turn. Yes. Okay. So so if they do die, so whoever, whatever character you put this on, if they die, you get this card. Wait, do you get the character back when this character is banished and challenge return this card yeah so you get the character back not this card not magical aid so that might be good to bounce a character back right and there's been so many bounce cards that unless i'm reading that wrong that seems like a way to bounce a character back into your hand so i'm not sure i'd have to i'd have to make sure i have this right because if it's just getting magical aid back into your card it would be a regular plus three four three which probably isn't that strong. I think by itself it's not that strong, but perhaps being able to bounce a character into your hand would make it stronger. So that one's a maybe. That's a maybe, I think. Here is Elsa's Ice Palace. It costs three ink. It's uninkable, and it's only a one four. Well, it's only a four. It costs one to put somebody here. The Eternal Winter. When you play this location, choose an exerted character. While this location is in play, that character can't ready at the start of their turn. That's interesting. And it does give you one lore, but I feel like this power is the stronger part of this card because you could lock an exerted character into not being able to be ready. So that could really be a bit of a shutdown card. It's it's a bit weak though, so it wouldn't take a lot to knock this uh, location out. But if you could protect this location, you could kind of lock one of their characters out of play, uh, which could be kind of an interesting strategy. I haven't seen a ton of 
I guess with Anna, you could say exert one of their characters and then lock them into exerting, which would be like what, like a five or six uninkable costed combination, which is a bit expensive. But yeah, it's kind of interesting that this location just has an action on the opponent's characters. I don't feel like I've seen that happen. This just feels like it should be a character, but it's not. <laughs> I don't know why. Interesting. It seems good. It seems like a good location. The library. This is a three cost. It has eight health, which is a lot. A gift for Belle. Lost in a book. Whenever a character is banished while here, you may draw a card. That's interesting. So and because this is so cheap, I think that that makes it even better because it doesn't cost much. You're, you're paying one for a character to go here. And if you're putting your, say, your challenging offensive characters in here for one, you're almost paying one to draw a card, which is obviously a pretty good price to pay. I can imagine this being a pretty strong location too. So kind of like back-to-back -back good locations, I think. Antonio Madrigal, animal expert. Three cost, three, four, nothing else going on. That's just not gonna be strong enough, Antonio. Here's a bell, untrained mystic. Sure, that's... Sure, why not? Three ink, three three. Here now, don't do that. When you play this character, move up to one damage counter from chosen character to chosen opposing character. It's kind of interesting that Amethyst seems to have that going on. The heal one, damage one, a combo action. Is it strong though? I don't think so. I just think that it's such a weak, a weak heal and a weak damage that I don't think it's worth building your deck around those sort of actions when clearly probably a bounce deck seems- I mean you wouldn't bounce this person right that'd be too damaged like great it's so weakly damaged I think it's just too small if it was two if it was heal two damage deal two damage at this cost I feel like it might make a little bit more sense but I feel like one for one just isn't strong enough Elsa storm chaser now on discovery channel uninkable three cost one four tempest when you can exert her for this. Chosen character gains challenger plus two and rush this turn. That seems pretty good. Rush is a, when so many of these challenger bonuses in this deck, but I think rush is like the real strength that you would get. So having challenger and rush makes that so much more sh stronger for a character that you're playing, especially if you're playing a low cost one, one, you could really just buff them up and do some damage out of nowhere. And like, like we've seen with this deck, it seems to be like a lot of card draw. So a lot of card draw and some lower cost characters having strong powers like this. And plus it's just exerting. It's not even when you play Elsa, you can do this when she's just on the board. It seems like a strong card. Flotsam, Ursula's baby, uh, an un uninkable three, four, two. Quick escape. When this character is banished in a challenge, return this card to your hand. Ominous Pair. Your character is named Jetsum Game. When this character is banished in a challenge, return this card to your hand. So obviously you want to play this with the other one because he would also gain this strength. I feel like this strength isn't great because he's a 4-2 so you, and he only does one lore. So you would want to be doing damage with Flotsam here. You would want to be challenging. So even when you do challenge, you return him. Okay, I get it. Never mind. I was thinking like it would only work when he was challenged and banish but no if you do the challenging he will still return to your hand never mind that makes it better does that make it good enough probably not he's a challenger plus two so if they're both out they both get challenger plus two so they would be he would be a four four and the other one would be a six two so they'd, they'd be strong challengers but you'd have to have them both out there can that be consistent? Maybe not. And if he's not out there, he's kind of good by himself if you just want a 4-4 challenger without, I guess the other one would bounce. Oh boy. It just seems like I doubt you could get this consistent, have them out there consistently. And that's when they're at their strongest. And if you can't be consistent with them, are they good enough by themselves? I don't know. They're decent challengers. That's about it. So you didn't really want to have a deck that wants people out challenging regularly. I'm not 100% sure what Amethyst, what their win condition is so far, because it doesn't seem like it's rushing towards, it doesn't seem like it's rushing to quest a lot. I haven't seen a ton of cards that you'd be like, oh, you're definitely questing and questing and questing with this guy over and over again. It seems to be more supportive, if anything, loads of card draw. So I don't know if Amethyst is really a deck built around itself. It might be built more as a support archetype for another deck that you combine it with, obviously. Got another magic broom, so at least there's more than one. This is the lively sweeper. Look how lively, it's not even sweeping, it's three ink, two four. See, this one has nothing on it, so 
for there to be broom synergy, you don't really want to see a broom that is bad. It's not even a 3-4. There's been a 3-ink three 3-4 three with one lore. This one, just because it's a broom, is being a broom strong enough to knock a strength off? It's hard to imagine. I better see some more broom synergy. If I don't see more broom synergy, I'm writing to Disney. Disney France and with a sign that says more broom synergy and carry it around. Uh, Marshmallow. 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 Terrifying Snowman. Three. Uninkable. Zero three. This character gets one strength each for each card in your hand. So that's interesting. It's, we had that card earlier that was give a character one strength for each card in your hand. Or that might have been tied with somebody. This one just has that. This could be strong. This could be a really strong challenger because especially with this card draw deck, you're probably having... It's hard to say what your average would be just off the top of my head as somebody who hasn't played with this deck or anything, but probably three or four. So is that good enough? Would a three or four be good enough? No. Would a five or six be good enough? Maybe as a challenger, but even then there's some, probably some cards that are like three, three with a challenger plus two for three or four, right? So to pin this card to needing to have a lot of cards in your hand for this to be any use means this is probably useless. So, and for an uninkable, I don't think so. That's bad, right? This card seems real bad. Peter Pan, three cost uninkable. The Shadow Finder, oh, he's looking for a shadow. He can rush, he's a two three with rush, which isn't great, and he's evasive. And his other character, so his fly of course action, your other characters with evasive gain rush. Interesting. So I think we're start, probably gonna start seeing more strong rush cards, which, I probably tied with what the amethyst does the fact that he gives other evasive characters rush it's hard to say if that's good or not because i feel like evasive characters are usually ones that want to survive a little bit more than they want to do damage you don't really need an evasive card that you want to challenge other cards with because what's the point of them being evasive if they're killing themselves challenging so why would you want your evasive characters to have rush i'm not entirely sure so i'm not sure if this character's good or not and for a three cost uninkable with meh stat line uh i don't feel like this character would be good ursula two ursulas what's happening ursula's plan an action each opponent chooses and exerts one of their characters those characters can't ready at the start of their next turn for three uninkable and you're exerting one of your own characters to two why why would you do this this seems i don't understand i don't understand and you know, if that other character gets to choose who they exert and they have a bodyguard character, they just exert their bodyguard, right? And nothing happens. So I don't, I don't understand what the tactic would be with this. So right now it, it doesn't seem good. And it's, it does the same thing to you as it does to them. And you're spending three ink on it. I don't get it. So I'm guessing this is bad. Ursula's Lair, Eye of the Storm. Another location. This is a three cost uninkable. It costs two to move somebody here. It is six in willpower and it gives a lore. Slippery Halls. Whenever a character is banished in a challenge while here, you may return them to your hand. So we've seen that sort of thing again. That seems pretty interesting. Kind of an easy way to bounce a character if you just also want to do some damage. Uh, Seed to power. Characters named Ursula get one lore while here. Well, that might, that seems pretty good. I'm, I really don't think can't remember what the Ursulas do at the top of my head. I think we've only seen one Ursula. So I guess that's good. That's probably not, that's like a bit of a perk, a little bit of a bonus, but probably not happening as often as to make it worthwhile. I think what you really want here is these, the ability to bounce characters after they challenge. So we had one that would cost one to draw a card every time somebody was banished from there. And this one will bounce that character in your hand. So both of those locations seem good. I guess you probably picked this one if you have more of a deck with the bounce mechanic uh, making more sense for your, your deck. So yeah, that seems pretty good too. Some good locations in this, this deck. Hydros, an Ice Titan, a 3 cost 2-2. Two, two. Blizzard, ch exert, chosen character. So that's interesting. So this bit has that, like that Anna power, right? 
where she just comes on the board and chooses one to exert. Uh, he can just do this every time if that's worth it. He's kind of weak. Boy, he should be a little bit stronger, honestly. This card would be better if he had like one more and was a bit stronger. And this was just kind of the power that he did because he's just going to get wrecked. He's just a, t he's only got two willpower. And you're probably not using his lore because this is a stronger move than that a lot of times. Otherwise, you'd just be playing a card that just gets lore for you and can take more of a hit than a 2-2. Two -two. So I feel like he's just too weak. And I don't know if this is a strong enough move for him to do and then die, probably. Iago, pretty poly, 3 cost, 3-2. Three he has evasive. Is that it? Not good enough. Here's our Jafar. A lamp thief, just a lamp thief. I am your, or is it three, cost two, two. I'm your master now. When you play this character, look at the top two cards of your deck, put one on the top of your deck and the other on your bottom. So we've seen this a few times now. And I think uh, Jafar is probably a bit stronger just because we know he has some synergy. He has that synergy with that lamp. He could draw two cards with that. So he probably, he might get played just for that. And then for this two lore, and this is an okay power for him to have. So everything with this card is okay. And he has stronger synergies anyway. So probably not unlikely to be played in some decks. Just because we know he's got some decent synergies. Uh, here's another broom. A magic broom. The big sweeper. Uh, three cost, one five. Clean sweep. While this character is at a location, it gets two strength. So you definitely want to have... We've seen some strong locations. So... We definitely know that there's some worthwhile locations to be putting into cards, uh, put characters into. So putting him into one of those locations that, say, draws a card when he dies or bounces him back into your hand could be good. And we know the brooms has some synergy with that other wizard and probably the other brooms, I would guess. So might be a pretty decent card. Like, not just because we know those locations are good, he might be worth, you know, a 3-5. So he's not even going to be like a 3-5, right? Because it's going to be, you pay 3. And then you pay one or two to move him into one of those locations for that extra bonus that he gets there. And at least he gets that extra strength while he's there. So uh, if you've got locations in your deck, this isn't a bad card to put in there. That's for sure. So probably seeing some decent play. The Queen, Hateful Rival. A three cost, four three. So it's pretty strong stats for a uh, three cost, but obviously not strong enough to be getting played with having no nothing else here's another ursula so we have seen some ursula synergy uninkable three for a three three you're too late whenever this character quest chosen opposing character can't ready at the start of their turn so another one of those sort of stall shutdown actions which is which can be pretty good so is this strong enough just with that and maybe you put her into her palace thing for an extra one lore maybe i don't know if this sort of disruption is that strong well it is okay Whenever this character quests, you can do that. That's actually a lot better than what I was thinking. So just being able, just as like an action when you play it, it I think that would be too weak. Being able to consistently quest and shut down one of their characters is actually pretty strong. And you have that other location that also does something similar to this, right? It makes them unable to ready. So there could be some uh, tactics of consistently shutting down the other the opponent's cards that they've played. That could be an interesting strategy to do. So... This is probably good, and we've seen some synergy with Ursula, so, you know, make, that always makes these kind of cards a little bit better, even if it is a bit expensive. It's not too bad for a 3-3-3. Three, three, three. That's a bit weak, but with a strong power, I think it tips it over the edge to being playable. And you can kind of play this at any time, right? Because that that this power is kind of strong early game and mid game and late game. So it's not like I got this late and I've got to pay 3 ink for it. Well, it's still doing a pretty good action. Last ditch effort and action for uninkable three. Exert chosen opposing character, then chosen character of yours gains plus two, challenger plus two. So another challenger card, and it's so expensive with these uninkables. That's like so expensive because it could just be stuck in your hand for the situation to arise when you want to use it. And that situation might ne not necessarily arise. It is kind of good to set up a character to attack right so that's what all this is doing it's forcing a character into being able to be challenged and then giving one of your characters a plus two to trade with them i just don't feel like those sorts of plays are worth a card this being uninkable makes it an even more expensive card than normal 
so just not worth it surely the boss is on a roll a song for three look at the top five cards of your deck put any number of them number of them at the top or bottom of your deck in any order and gain one lore that seems really good for those sorts of plays that we've been seeing throughout this whole uh card selection to be able to it's not thinning your deck entirely but it is kind of thinning your deck for your next plays and those could be five terrible cards that you're just like okay i don't want to even deal with them right now so surely my next five cards after them will be of higher quality in a probability sense than those five cards so you'd be like great i'm getting those out of my way maybe i need them later or they're just a bunch of ones and now you need higher cost cards or you could have five cards and say, oh, these will be the perfect next five cards to draw for the plays I want to make. And you get one lore as a little, little cherry on top. So this card seems very good for three. Very good. Got another location, the Sorcerer's Tower. A three cost. It's got seven willpower and it costs two to move somebody here. Broom Closet. Your character's name, Magic Broom, may move here for free. Ooh, interesting. Magical power, characters get plus one while here. Okay, that's confusing. I thought that this symbol that would be over here indicated that that would be what is what happened? Why is this one specific towards that? I need to read the rules about locations. Okay, so that's confusing, but we're seeing the magic broom synergy. So what's so special about this location besides it being free for brooms? So we've only seen one broom that synergizes with the location so far. So I don't think that this would be worth just giving that broom plus two or three to his challenge or whatever. But I guess they all get one bonus lore as well? I don't know. This is... that confused me. I feel stupid now. I can't... okay. Maybe I should pause this and look. Hold on. I'm gonna pause this and look. I am back. I have done research. I am... I have learned something. If there is a lore icon here, it means this location will gain that lore each turn. So if it has one here, they gain one lore. This location itself gains lore. And if there's two, then the location itself will gain two lore. So some of these cards, those locations that just have lore on them, I thought that a character there would get bonus lore. That's not what happens. It just gets lore by it. It just generates lore by itself. So a character that does move here will get bonus lore. So that makes it a bit stronger, especially if you have brooms that can just move here for free. That could be a quick boost to lore. If you have two or three brooms on board, all of a sudden they're doubling their lore if need be. And one of them is obviously getting stronger. So yeah, that could be well, pretty decent in a broom deck. Not in a broom deck, I'm not sure. Are you gonna pay an extra two to get a character here for one extra lore? Maybe not. Arthur, Wizard's Apprentice, a three ink, uninkable, one three. Students, whenever this character quests, you may return another chosen character of yours to your hand to gain two lore. So that's just a bounce anybody and gain an extra two lore. That's seems crazy good for some of the we've seen so many cards that have like bouncing restrictions and this guy just does it for playing what you do anyway like he's going to be a huge target obviously but if you want to bounce a character then you definitely play this guy you get such a bonus for it anyway and get that character back in your hand seems like a no-brainer to have this guy in your deck fairy godmother pure heart three cost three four just leave it to me whenever you play a character named cinderella you may exert chosen character so I don't know, it's too specific for Cinderella's, right? I mean, we haven't even seen a Cinderella yet in this deck. So for you to, for this character to be any good, you have to play a Cinderella. It's just not good enough. Got Merlin, the crab version of Merlin, a three cost three, three, ready or not. When you play his character and he leaves play, chosen character gains challenger plus three. Is that good? I guess him just leaving three, like leaves play. So you could, this could be a bounce target, but is a plus three worth a bounce? Maybe. That seems a bit weak for maybe something else you'd rather bounce. Oh, I don't know how to say it. Isma? Without beauty sleep? A three cost three four with nothing else, so probably not good enough. Unless there's synergies with or shift targets. Gruesome and Grim, uninkable three here. Uh, but it can be song, so song. Play a character with cost four or less for free. They gain rush. At the end of the turn, banish them. They can challenge the turn they're placed. Well, I would hope so. They have rush, right? This would be really good for characters that 
have a bonus to when they are banished or removed from play and if you want them to challenge or even a like low cost challenge card that you want to get out quick to do some damage the fact that it costs three uninkable but it can play a four cost card is also interesting and it's play a card it's not just putting them on the stats it's actually playing their card they just die at the end of the turn so if you had played a character that was had a really good action when you played them but were nece not necessarily like a great card otherwise it might be pretty good to play it's just a mana cheat card i just don't see why this wouldn't be a good card you really probably there's a lot of cards you don't actually care about if they die at the end of the turn so to get them out there and to attack or do a challenge real quick and then do whatever their action is as well it's probably really good the sorcerer spellbook a three cost uninkable it is an item though so you exert it and you pay one and you gain one more okay that seems good that just seems like a constant lore gaining item you would probably have so many times where you have one extra lore to play or one extra ink to play to just gain lore or if you have two of these down you could just gain two lore per turn and if they don't have item removal then there's no stopping it so seems pretty easy to see this in a lot of decks dr facilier a remarkable gentleman he's a three cost two four dreams made real whenever you play a song you may look at the top two cards of your deck put one on the top of your deck and one on the bottom that's probably all right he seems okay and i guess if you have a lot of song decks this might help you plan your next moves a bit is it just i don't know if it's that strong I feel like there's so many times, so many cards that we've seen that are doing this action anyway that you don't have to have such a specific thing like playing songs that I don't know if this is strong enough to be in any decks. Elsa, the Snow Queen, a three cost, two, three. Uh, she has the action to exert a chosen... Have I seen this already? Or did somebody else have something exactly the same? Oh, I guess that, that Snow guy did. But she's a little bit stronger. He was like a 2-2, right? And he had two lore, so I guess you would probably play Elsa over that, that dude if you want this action anyway, right? Which is what I was saying. This seems like the right stats for this sort of play, which I think makes it a better card and probably one that you would probably play because it can be a bit disruptive to the opponent and set them up for some of these challenge cards that uh, you might have in your deck. Maleficent Sorceress? So many Maleficents. A three cost two two, cast my spell. When you play this character, you may draw a card. I guess that's okay. And it could be a bounce target if you want to keep drawing cards too, right? So we have been looking for some bounce targets. This could be one because it just draws a card right away and also puts a body out on the board. That's not terrible, but not great. So I can see this getting played because it's such a simple draw a card and be a target and it's Maleficent. I think there's more synergies with her. Rafiki, Mysterious Sage, an uninkable three, 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 that's just Rush. That doesn't seem good enough, Rafiki, not this time. The Wardrobe, a three, three, four, no. Nope. Friends on the other side song, draw two cards. It could cost three, it could cost zero if you exert a singing character for it. So that's probably a definite add for a card draw deck and maybe just any deck that's mixed with Amethyst here seems really good. Two cards for possibly zero, right? You would definitely have that in your deck. White Rabbit's Pocket Watch for three ink here. That's an item. You can exert it and play one ink. Chosen character gains rush this turn. So this is a rush generator for your characters, which I imagine there would be. Uh, and for one ink, after you've already paid for it, it seems pretty good. Especially as you get later in the game, you probably have larger minions or characters rather. So giving them rush for a very low cost to immediately do some challenges would be really good. So I could see this as being a very good late game item. So yeah, that seems really good. We are now into fours. We've got Merlin as a turtle this time. He's a four cost three, three. Give me time to think when you play his character and when he leaves play, look at the top two cards. Again, these sorts of, I just don't feel like it's, I feel like at this point in the game, it's a little bit weaker. I guess we're always going to keep seeing these sorts of actions on these characters. But I don't know if I, if this is the card I want to see it on, honestly. So I don't think this is strong enough. Bruni, Fire Salamander. He's a 4 cost 2-2, two, two, evasive. When this character is banished, you may draw a card. I guess that's okay. I would like to... This would be a kind of card you want to put on one of those locations that puts it back into your hand. Because he would draw a card and then go back out and maybe get back in that location and keep cycling him. 
because he's you're going to want a quest with him because he's too lore, right? So him, and then him dying isn't that big of a deal because you can draw a card, so he kind of pays for himself in a way. Uh, so obviously, if you could get him back after banishing, like putting him in one of those locations, that'd be like really, really good. But I don't know. Otherwise, I think you need a specific deck for him to be in because he's not strong, and he's getting you some lore and it gets you a card when he gets killed. But maybe there's just stronger cards out there in the first place to not have to be like oh i really want to draw a card so i'm going to play this guy that'll die and then i get a card well just play a stronger card that is worth having more of an impact on the game than him i guess so i don't know he seems like he could be good and he probably is good enough but i think i think there's some decks that he would not be good in and there's probably some decks that he is good in earth giant living mountain it's almost like the same the same words uh, four cost four five unearth when you play this character each opponent draws a card why why what do you mean what no i'm not gonna play that madam mim as an elephant a four cost three seven wow big big stats a little game when you play this character banish her or return another character chosen character of yours to your hand so another bounce card madam mim which is good sneaky move at the start of your turn you may move up to two damage counters from this character see this card seems really good and i've been talking about like how that one for one just isn't good enough this is a two for two which is probably fine probably not like a game changer or anything but it's probably going to do a lot more and the fact that it's again another a solid bounce like this card seems really good so obviously with these bounce package this madam member and the other madam member are going to be uh, staples of it magica does spell cruel sorceress a four cost two five playing with power during your opponent's turns and an eff if an effect would cause you to discard one or more cards from your hands you don't discard it so a very specific counter to people playing discarding card decks so uh, if those are very popular, then this card can be a very effective way to counter that entire. And, and I, you know, I know there is that one card that you discard your whole hand and you draw seven cards. Both players do. So this would, if this was on board, they could not play that that card. That would be a complete shutdown of that strategy. And if there was ever mill decks, which I know there are some, but I don't think they're popular, this would completely shut down a mill deck strategy. So could be effective and it's probably one that really depends on what the metas are but i can see it being played a lot when there's certain common cards that maybe make both players discard cards or just makes one player discard a card this can completely negate that which would be good you don't want to have to throw away cards because your opponent played a card uh, rafiki shaman duelist a fork uninkable one four is so weak uh, he can rush though when this when you play his character he gains challenger plus four this turn just this turn so he can only so he's a rush five four basically and then after that he's a one four with two lore which is okay but just a rush five four yeah it's okay you know it could be worse it could be like an action that just does five you know damage to somebody he's just kind of doing the same thing if there's a character out there worth hitting and then at least after that he can do get two lore you know four cost on is a lot so if, you, if rush is the way you control the board then i can see rafiki being uh, a regular addition to those sorts of decks it's not bad really king of hearts monarch of wonderland a four cost one four weak again pleasing the queen he exerts chosen exerted character can't ready at the start of next turn so another shutdown sort of character which i think is a pretty good strategy uh, he might be just too weak and and the fact that he's got this like two lore but you're really playing him for this chosen you're playing him for this action so you want to exert him for this reason, which means you're not exerting him for this lore. So it's almost like this lore is a weakness because you don't necessarily want him to be doing this. You want to be doing this. So you'd rather the cost that this lore gives you either make this cheaper or boost his stats so that he stays alive a little bit more. But when they put it towards this lore, I just feel like they're making this card weaker than it should be. So I feel like this card is weaker than it should be. And there's probably a stronger version of this like we saw with... Uh, kind of that same situation I described with those two, three 
mana cards that I can't think of right now. Bruno Madrigal, Undetected Uncle, which is a very weird, if you don't know what the movie is, so for somebody to have the subtitle Undetected Uncle is kind of creepy. Uh, four cost, three, three. He's evasive. Oh yeah, I mean, what character should be evasive more than Bruno, right? You just have to see it. Two exerts. Name a card, and then reveal the top card of your deck. If it's the name card, put that card in your hand and gain three lore. Otherwise, put it on the top of your deck. So another one of his, these fun gamble cards, I kind of love these. If you know, say you, I guess if you've like loaded your car, your deck with Maleficence and you just say Maleficent, right? You have a pretty decent chance to get the right card, draw that card and gain three lore. This seems like a, a deck that you would play the odds on and I can see it, you know, you might have like a 30, you know, 20 to 30% chance of getting it three lore and if that makes it worth it it might make it worth it so i can imagine these cards getting actually play and actually and kind of being fun i just i really like these gamble mechanics camilo madrigal something like that four cost two five many forms at the start of your turn you may choose one the characters get plus one lore this turn this character gains plus two challenger this turn interesting very interesting that seems good uh, having that flexibility can really affect your gameplay each turn so you might have a wide board which this plus one would be kind of huge for or you might need to do some quick damage and that challenger could be really good so having like a flexible card like this seems pretty solid uh, i can imagine playing this card in a few decks Delor there's lots of madrigals here dolores madrigal easy listener a four three three Magical Informant. When you play this character, if an opponent has exerted character in play, you may draw a card. That's probably regularly drawing you a card. You probably wouldn't play this if it wouldn't draw you a card, so it's probably drawing you a card every time. So it's a 4 cost 3-3 three, three with 2 lore worth, plus, and always draws a card worth it. Might be. I think you'd have to compare it with other similar cards that are going to regularly draw you cards like that Merlin did when he... Well, actually, no, he didn't. Ignore that. I could see this getting played. It's kind of an easy always draw a card because otherwise you wouldn't play it. And it gets you two lore. So it seems it seems pretty probably above average. I mean, it's obviously better than some of these crappy cards that don't do anything. Um, but is it better than some of these other cards? And it could be bounced and you can draw another card with it, right? Uh, so yeah, it could be a bit of a, a card draw engine if you if you need it to be. Louisa Madrigal, the magically strong one. Uninkable four cost for four three here. Rush, no, 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 no. You would not play this card. Why would you play this card over that Rafiki that has higher health and two lore? So what? This is bad. This is way worse. Why would they print that? All right, Miss Potts, Enchanted Teapot, a four cost three four. It'll turn out out all right. When you play this character, if you have a character named Lumiere or Cogsworth in play, you may draw a card. I don't think I've seen a Lumiere yet. I have seen some Cogsworth, so there's certainly some Cogsworth that are probably even worth playing. So they might be on the board with Miss Potts. So that, depending on the synergy, if this could always draw you a card, and again, this could be a bounce target as well if you need some card draw. Yeah, probably sees play depending on these other cards. And at least it's two. It's not just one, right? Sometimes you just see that if Cinderella is in play. Well, at least this one has two people, so there's gonna be, it might be, you know, double the chances of having a worthwhile card that you have in play, so that Miss Potts will draw your card. So probably a pretty good card. Genie, a supportive friend, four cost uninkable, a three five, three wishes. Whenever this character quests, you may shuffle this card into your deck to draw three cards. Yeah, that happens, that's great. So that's a draw three, easy, right? You would definitely play this. Not even worth talking about. Drawing three cards, come on. Magica de, de Spell, Thieving Sorceress, a four cost, three, four. Telekinesis, to exert her, return chosen item with cost equal to or less than this character's strength to its player's hand. So would you wanna bounce, you wouldn't wanna bounce your items because they don't usually, those aren't usually worth, that's not usually worth doing. Most items, aren't don't have the bonus like when this removes moves from play it does something so you wouldn't bounce an item into your hand and would bouncing an item into another player like bouncing their item back be worth it because items aren't usually like super expensive so would you pay a four cost and then exert her just to 
maybe slightly disrupt your opponent and maybe cost them ink to replay their item? I don't know. I haven't seen items that I'd be like devastated if the opponent bounced it back into my hand and I haven't seen an item that I'd want to bounce back into my hand so I feel like this power doesn't really do anything of use. So I don't think this card's very good. The Firebird, Force of Destruction. Uh, it's a 6-2, so it's at least an interesting stat line for a card that doesn't do anything. But again, it's just going to be a 6-2 that you're going to challenge with and then it dies. So I don't think that that's very good and it's pretty expensive for those things happening. The Treasure Guardian for 4 cost uninkable, a 6-6, six, six, that's big. Who disturbs my slumber? This character can't challenge or quest unless it is at a location. Okay, so that makes it way worse. It's pretty strong, but we have seen some strong locations for Amethyst. So you might be playing a deck that has enough locations in it that this card would go in one of them. And then it can, you know, put in some work. So obviously very specific decks for this. It's not, a, it's not an all-arounder, but it could be good. It's, it's so strong for that, that cost, but obviously you're going to have to pay for it to go into a location. Or you put it on the magic rug and it goes in for free if you're playing that stupid card. The Queen's Castle Mirror Chamber. Uh, it costs 4, it's got 7 willpower, and it costs 1 to move a character there. Using the mirror, at the start of your turn, for each character you have here, you may draw a card. Oh, that's good. Yeah, sure. It's got 2 lore as well. It's going to be a huge target, obviously, with like... All, how good all of this is uh, it's not cheap but it only costs one to move somebody here and so if you can if this survives you could be drawing one two three cards maybe uh, depending on how much ink you have when you put this down and everything but yeah this is, this seems like it has the potential to be a big swing so i can imagine this card being a huge especially in location decks this would be huge dr facilier savvy opportunist a four cost four two evasive why what's the point what are you going to do with him? He's got two... He's You're just going to hit somebody with him, right? I don't understand these evasives sometimes. It seems bad. Elsa on a horse. Gloves off. This is gloves off Elsa. A four cost three four with challenger. Doesn't seem good enough. You're just doing six damage when you challenge somebody. But, you know, you're probably... That's just not going to be like your win condition a lot of times. So it just doesn't seem strong enough. Merlin Goat. 4 cost 4 3. Here I come. When you play his character and when he leaves, play gain 1 lore. Okay, so that's what I thought that this guy was the bounce target for a lot of these decks. You know, you play him, you get 1 lore. You bounce him, you get 1 lore. You play him again, you get another lore. You bounce him again, you get another lore. So, and plus he could do damage. He could lore quest himself before he bounced him. So he could be, his play could be, you know, a loop of 3 lore, right? Or challenging with a 4, which is pretty strong. So yeah, this seems, this with like the bounce deck seems super strong and super swing turns. If you can get him out and then get him, you know, doing the things he does and then bouncing and playing him again, seems really good. So probably a very stable card in a lot of these decks. Merlin Rabbit, uninkable four cost, two, three, hoppity hip. When you play this character and when he leaves, you draw a card. So similar to the goat, except just for card draw this time. It's kind of weird that he's uninkable. He's kind of just as strong. They're apparently drawing a card is, is rated higher as than getting a, a lore, which I guess makes sense. A card's, you know, much more stronger gameplay wise. But yeah, again, he could be a play, a, play him, do a, get one lore, draw a card, bounce him, draw a card, play him again, draw a card. So he could get you three or four cards just by himself without even having doing that much effort as long as you have like a single bounce. He could get you four cards. So that's crazy actually. So yeah, understandable why this is another really strong card. Merlin Shapeshifter, a 1-5 for four cost. Battle of Wits, whenever one of your other characters was is returned to your hand from play this character gets plus one this turn so obviously another synergy with this bounce package uh, and he can you know rack up some pretty good lore depending on when you play him and how many cards you're bouncing at that time and you know if you have the item that bounces you have locations that can bounce there's a lot that could really rack up the lore on this one card probably be pretty interesting to see what the most lore somebody has bounced 
and racked up just with this guy for one turn. Certainly synergistic with the other Merlins and the Madam Mims and some of these songs, actions, and locations. So you can see the package coming together with these last few cards. Peter Pan's Shadow, not sewn on. A four, uninkable for two, three. Evasive, rush, and your other characters with rush gain evasive. So another one of those synergies. Uh, he's got two, three. See, the, the two, three lore makes more sense because I feel like if you want, you want these evasive characters to have, to be questing because they're harder to hit than normal. So why do you want to rush so much with these guys? I don't understand that aspect of some of these evasive rush characters. So I'm not sure. To me, it doesn't sound good, but maybe it is. I don't get it. Binding contract. Uninkable four for an item. You have to exert it for all eternity. You exert this item, and then you exert one of your characters, and then you can exert a chosen character. That's... That seems dumb. There's characters that already do that. So why play an item for an uninkable four, which is a lot, and then you still have to sacrifice exerting one of your own characters just to exert one of their characters? That seems stupid. That seems terrible. On air to Arendelle, a four cost to four, loving hearts. When you play this character, if you have a character named Elsa in play, choose an opposing character. The chosen character doesn't ready at the start of their turn. That seems pretty specific to needing Elsa and there have been some good Elsa so it's probably not crazy to see an Elsa in play in your deck. Some of these characters do this anyway without having to have an Elsa in play, right? Unless they were just actions. This seems, again, this seems like one of those specific scenarios that might not arise and then you have a 4 cost 2 4. At least she can uh, quest for 2 but if you aren't getting this, yeah it's not even like a when she quests, it's just when you play. So if you aren't getting this action I don't think she's worth a 2-4 uh, otherwise, but if you've got enough Elsas in your deck that it's likely an Elsa will be in play, then this could be a better card. Speaking of Elsa, Queen Regents, 4 cost 4-4, four, four, but nothing going on, so probably not strong enough here. Oh, look at the big old Jafar. Jafar, Keeper of Secrets, 4 cost 0-5. He gets plus 1 strength for each card in your hand and 2 lore, so probably doesn't feel strong enough. But we have seen a lot of card draw, so I guess in a card draw deck you'd probably have this guy out. And at least he's he's got some decent health, uh, and he lures for two, so he could be you know somebody that's luring that also is doing a lot of damage. If people are trying to challenge him, you know he might have five six strength if you've got him in a deck that's drawing a lot of cards. So I can see him being good. Uh, I could also see him being bad. So I don't know. It might be a bit too iffy. To run Jafar here. Here's another Jafar, the Wicked Sorcerer, a 4 cost 2 5. He's got Challenger plus 3, so he'll be a 5 5 when attacking. Doesn't seem that great. That seems a bit too basic. Uh, just another Challenger card when, you know, you might want to play the other one more than you want to play him. He might be a 6, a 5 5 all the time, not just when challenging. Uh, and then even more, possibly even higher than that. And he has 2 lore, so I feel like this card. Is much stronger than this card. Jetsum Ursula Spy, four cost three three, evasive, uh, sinister slither. Your character's name Flotsam gain evasive. So I feel like we're going to see a similar thing as the earlier ones, which I don't think were good cards. So I don't feel like this is also going to be a good card. Yeah, it's just it's too basic. Mickey Mouse Wayward Sorcerer for four cost. He's a three four. Animate Broom. You pay one last to play Broom characters. Interesting. Ceaseless Worker. Whenever one of your Broom characters is banished in a challenge, you may turn that card to your hand. So more Broom synergy and pretty good Broom synergy, honestly. So get them out cheaper. And then if you could like challenge with your Brooms and then put them right back in your hand and then play them again. So cycle your Brooms out. I could see it. Some these Broom decks seem pretty decent. You know, the Broom synergy seem pretty decent, might not just be like a deck, but uh, they, they at least have some like strong synergies, more than we saw like with the Dwarfs, with, you know, Snow White and stuff, so, yeah, it seems like a good card. Zeus, a 4 cost, uninkable, he's a 0-4 with Rush and Challenger, so he's a 4-4 four, four challenging character and he has two lore. I don't know, this is a bit like that Jafar, just really expensive. Do you want to pay 4? Uninkable, this could be stuck in your hand, and then at best it's a 4-4 four, four when it attacks, and then it's a 0-4, so if you wanted to quest with 
Zeus here, he's an easy trade. He's dead, right? And he doesn't do any damage afterwards. So a 4-4 rush. I just feel like if I feel like rush characters shouldn't have Lord for challenging. I just don't understand why they they weaken them by putting that strength in their lore getting rather than in their stats. So I don't I don't really think this card's that good. On to the fives, Archimedes Electrified Owl of five cost, one four. Here's our first shift we've seen. So he can shift for three, which is a bit of a steal. Uh, he's evasive and challenger three. So he becomes more of a attacking owl, I guess. So he's be a four, four. Doesn't seem very good. Doesn't really, I can see the play that could be made. Like you have your weaker owl and then you shift him to then become an attack. But I don't think the other Archimedes were that good. So to have him as a shift that isn't especially good, doesn't seem that exciting. And I think, see, this is the first Floodborne I believe we've seen. So I think Floodborns are the shifts. And there was that item that you drew a card whenever a Floodborne entered play. So this would be, for the Amethyst deck anyway, possibly the first Floodborne card that you would see, which it could be on turn three, I suppose. So, But I don't really feel like this is that strong of a card. Elsa, the fifth spirit. Five cost to five has rush has evasive when you play this character exert chosen opposing character so right so again another one of these exert a chosen characters with elsa i think her other one does that as well so a bit of a disruptive play uh, a two five one ink or not one ink but uh one lore and just for this attack i don't know i feel like this stat line is a bit weak for a, a five uh, i guess it really depends on how strong this is and it might be pretty strong I guess she does have rush and evasive, which is interesting. So the evasive doesn't seem that, inter that that useful here. I think it's more about the rush. So potentially she could exert a character and wipe them out all in one play. So I can understand that being a very strong move uh, as long as they weren't strong because she's not a heavy hitter, but I can see that being a very strong card. Monstro whale of a whale. What a, this is maybe some of my favorite card art that I've seen here. Unfortunately, he's just a five, six with nothing else going on. So probably not a very good card. It's not fair. Finders keepers, draw three cards for five? What? Is that it? Wait, oh, it's an action. Okay, I thought this was a character. I don't know why I thought it was a character. Maybe I just got confused by this enchanted, this enchanted card art. What's the other art? card art? Yeah, just draw three cards as an action for five cost? That's expensive. I don't think so. Not when there's so much card draw synergy, way less priced than this that it's probably much more effective towards winning the game than just literally playing one card that draws five, three cards for five. Get real. We've got a Bell Accomplished Mystic. Is Bell a Mystic? What have I missed? She is a five cost four four. She can be shifted onto the other Bells. Enhanced healing. When you play this character, move up to three damage counters from chosen character to chosen opposing character. And she's got two lore. I think we're now we're getting into the better damage counter trades range with two and three i think it makes much more f uh, sense that way the fact that you can shift her can get her out pretty early and do this as well that might be you know heal a character kill a character and have a strong character on board that has two lore so it could be pretty tough to take on uh if you can shift her out at three Assuming you can, I don't remember what the bell other bell prices were. They might be three as well, so you might not be really doing that. You might be getting her out to play like one turn earlier, right? But that seems like a pretty solid card for the stats and this lore and this attack that could take a, a character down. You know, and if you're playing rush characters as well, you could rush somebody and then heal that character to take out another one. It could be a nice little swing for board control with these some some of these characters got another bruno madrigal out of the shadows a five cost uninkable four five what have you got bruno it was your vision when you play this character chosen characters gains when this character is banished in a challenge you may return this card to your hand this turn okay so chosen character not plural just one so another bounceable action that you could do for a challenging character so I feel like those are even better than the normal bounces where you just return something to your hand because I guess there is the stipulation that they have to be challenging a character and also dying so you couldn't challenge a character that wouldn't kill your character because it's just this turn. So maybe that stipulation can make things a little bit harder especially if you're playing against somebody that has 
say low cost characters that are like low just rushing to quest you might struggle for them to banish your own character in the challenge which means you wouldn't be bouncing the character you want to bounce so but i feel like this is a strong enough card for those situations to be the minority of the time that you probably usually have bounceable cards that will get banished in a challenge and return to your hand so i can imagine this being a very good card Isabella Madrigal, the Golden Child. Five cost, three, four, evasive. Ladies first. During your turn, if no other character has quested this turn, this character gets plus three lore? That's easy. What? Okay. Leave it to me. Whenever this character quests, your other characters can't quest. Okay. You know, you read one thing and it's like, what? That's amazing. And then you read the second thing. You're like, okay. So there's, a, there's an up and a down. But, you know, if you only have one other character out there and they aren't, they don't have to quest, right? You can have, this can be the only character that you have out that quest and these are all attacking characters, challengers, whatnot. That can be, this character could be an easy four lore. I mean, it is an easy four lore. This wouldn't be that hard to do. It's an evasive, making it even harder to get off the board than normal. This seems like a no brainer. This seems like it goes in a lot of decks. More Madrigals, all right, Peppa Madrigal. Weathermaker, okay. Five cost uninkable for a one five. Wow. It looks like rain. When you play this character, you may exert chosen opposing character. That character can't ready at the start of the next turn. Unless they're at a location. That's that's some fun flavor. So it's a it's a bit better than the other ones that are either just exert a chosen character or a character can't ready at the start of the next turn. And then being out of location, it's a, a slight negative, but probably not that big of a deal anyway, because locations are not probably as regular and consistent as I would imagine just because they're a bit harder to play than normal but is this character a five uninkable for a one five with one lore just for this action just to shut down one single character one turn and I feel like we've seen this this action on a fair few other characters that were probably more playable than this that I don't think that you would hold this in your hand for you know, risk this being your uninkable when there's such stronger other uninkables. I don't think you put this one over them. So I don't feel like you'd play this card. All right, more brooms. I love them. Magic broom, the swift cleaner. Five uninkable for this broom though. Pricey. Four, four. Has rush. Clean this, clean that. When you play this character, you may shuffle all broom cards from your discard into your deck. Absolutely. What a... Love the broom deck. I'm going to have to build it. Uh, yeah, sure. I mean, it's got rush as well, so it's 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 expensive, but it's strong. And this is a good action if you've played your other brooms. And so far, you might have played three or four or five other brooms by this point. And especially if you're building a broom deck, maybe even more than that. And it gets four lore again. I don't really see that point of that with some of these rush characters, but it is what it is. I don't make these cards. But this seems reasonably strong, and obviously if you're building a broom deck, it's, this goes in it. So, good card. Here's a Maleficent, Mistress of All Evil. A 5 cost, 2, 3, low stats, dark knowledge. Whenever this character quests, you may draw a card. Well, that's good. Divination, during your turn, whenever you draw a card, you may move one damage counter from chosen character. So that's not super strong, but it's also whenever you draw a card. So, does that count on your very first your card draw for when you're playing a turn? I'm not sure. I, I don't feel like it is, but it might be. But obviously in a card draw deck, which there's loads of card draw for Amethyst so far, and this character itself draws a card whenever it quests. So that could be right away, just another damage, two lore. It seems really good. It's so weak though, and it's gonna be a huge target that you're gonna have to find a way to protect uh, Maleficent because otherwise <laughs> it's only gonna do this one turn, right? And it's dead. But it's not bad, even for that. Just you're always going to get a card with it, probably. Plus the two lore, and plus a little bit of the damage. And if you have a lot of card draw, you could do a bit of a board clear, maybe, with, you know, draw two or three cards, do two or three damage, right? So I can see this card being, especially in a card draw deck, but it seems pretty good. Stratos, a, I thought it had a little pink bow on there. Uh, five cost, Tornado Titan, five cost, four, four, evasive, Cyclone, gain lore equal to the number of Titan characters you have in play. I don't know how many Titans I've said have been good cards, but I don't feel like it's many. So is this one? 
is this two at tops maybe it might just be one because it'll be this card right so a five cost four four with rush is probably what you're really looking at here oh no it doesn't have rush it's just evasive so i don't i don't feel like that's good unless these titans are really good and you know at the top of my head i can't think of the other titans that have been like oh great put that one in there um, but potentially it could be good and evasive is decent at least it doesn't have evasive and rush or whatever but yeah could be two or three if you've got some titans out there so it might be good got a fairy godmother here here to help five cost three seven and that's it just two lore so not very good we have another fairy godmother mystic armorer uh, making swords so you know like a weapon dealer five cost three four can be shifted for two that's that's so cheap that's three that's three cheaper right uh forget the coach here's a sword Whenever this character quests, your characters gain challenger plus three, and when this character is banished and challenge, man, what a bounce. And that's that's characters, so that one's plural. So if you have a handful of characters on board and you have people to clear, you could be bouncing them all back into your hand just to while you quest, which you'll do. You know, it's a three or a two a two lore gainer here. Uh, and they're getting challenger, so you could be wiping out a board and getting cards back in your hand. That seems seems really good. And that shift is so cheap for two? Why is it two? <laughs> it feels like if that was three, I'd be saying the exact same thing, that it's a good card. So yeah, okay. It seems really good. Uh, here's Madame Mim, the rival of Merlin. I didn't know that was the situation here anyway. Uh, five cost to five could be shifted on three and there's been some other Madame Mim, so probably plenty of shift targets out there. Gruesome and Grim exert to play a character with four or less for free. They gain rush at the turn. Okay, so we've seen that, ki that card earlier playing a card. That was just an action though, wasn't it? It was either an action or a song that they would do this play a cost four for lesser free so this character can just do that yeah that that seems like a bit situational but it could be really good especially with some of these cards like we said with that earlier with the action they might be fine you know you might not care that they die <laughs> at the end of the turn you just get them out and they have a good action like a draw a card or something like that and then they, they have a rush seems really good madam mem's package seems like a uh, really strong and probably a pretty easy to navigate deck just lots of bouncing lots of card draw lots of uh, some of these sorts of plays very interesting pinocchio on the run man are all pinocchio cards uninkable he's an expensive wooden boy uh, he's a five cost uninkable three three could be shifted on some of those other pinocchios which i figured listen to your conscience when you play this character you may return chosen character or item with cost three or less to their player's hand so you could bounce something of yours you could bounce something of the opponent's is that good enough i feel like the pinocchio cards haven't really impressed me all that much so i'm not sure if i want to run the pinocchio package when they all are uninkable and this is a bounce for three or less when we've seen so many cards that make it so much easier to bounce any card or any character to your hand and again why are we bouncing items i haven't seen any item that i wanted to bounce yet so kind of confused by that but just doesn't seem even on the same strength as other cards that we've seen at like four so why are we paying five uninkable for this or three i guess but kind of weird kind of feel like it's weak too weak and i don't know why winnie the look at this card this card looks insane with winnie here winnie the pooh honey wizard <laughs> what a what a great wizardry tat like path to go down like the honey wizard five cost five five unfortunately the honey wizard is getting done absolutely so dirty this and the whale are probably my two favorite card arts so far and they're crap cards they, why don't they have anything going on you don't do anything with winnie the pooh honey wizard are you kidding me disney why are you doing my boy so dirty here all right here's that other flotsam we saw all the other po more powerful jetsam uh he's got rush he gives jetsam rush so these rush evasive characters i don't seem that good to me i don't understand them i mean all they really let you do is pick when you want to do your damage i guess because you can't really oops can't really do damage to them so I guess they're a bit strong like that because 
unless you have evasive characters yourself, but to me, they don't seem like they're that strong. Here's the queen, wicked and vain. A five cost for five. I summon the draw a card. Okay, that's fine. Uh, exert to draw a card. She's pretty strong. So yeah, just another part of that card draw package. And I guess when you, you exert, you don't get to do your lore. It's not questing, right? That's literally saying I'm questing. This is just saying draw. It'd be pretty stupid if I just now figured out that mechanic. Uh, so yeah, you know, having a character on the board that can literally just draw a card when you want to is a very strong. Um, so it seems like a good card. Tinkerbell, Peter Pan's ally, sure. Five cost uninkable, three, three is evasive. Loyal and devoted, your characters named Peter Pan gain challenger plus one. What? That seems super weak. That seems crazy weak. Just Peter Pan? Come on. At five cost, uninkable for three, three? That's crazy. That seems crazy to me. One, two, sixes. I know I keep saying like, it's cost six, which is stupid because we're on the sixes. You should just know that. Uh, the Knock, Mythical Spirit, a 5-5. Five, five. Turning Tides, when you play this character, you may move up to two damage counters from a chosen character to chosen. That seems very weak. We've seen much stronger cards than that that have other bonuses than this. And it's a six cost for 5-5. Five, five? Like maybe if this was 5-6 six or 6-6, six, six, you'd be like, oh, okay, yeah, sure. Because like this isn't amazing. It's okay, but it seems weak in this card. Louisa Madrigal, Entertaining Muscle, a 4-8. Uninkable though. And just three lore for a pretty strong card. But, you know, three lore is pretty rare, so I think that does boost it up a little bit more than normal. But it's, it's really expensive. If you drew this on your first uh, your first draw, you'd be miserable, right? That'd be such a, a bad card draw. You know, maybe in a heavy card draw deck, this could be some of your your, your finisher uh, and it is really strong so but i don't know just these cards that don't have anything going on i think this one just because it has three lore going on makes it a little bit stronger than normal but i feel like we'll see stronger cards here let's see we'll look uh, camillo madrigal family copycat a three seven see not as strong but like close right imitates whenever this character quests you may gain lore equal to the lore of chosen other character of yours return that character to your hand okay so about another bounce package a bit confusing but he steals the lore of them and puts that character back in your hand so you play them again you know and you might be bouncing your card draw engine your lore draw engine something like you know your merlin goats whatever so it seems really good seems maybe even better than Probably those, uh, well, I mean, it's a little bit different than like the Madame Mims that bounce immediately, but you're going to put him on the board. You're just going to have to wait a turn to do his powers. Yeah, I can imagine this being very good. Half Hexwell Crown. This is uninkable, an uninkable item, an unexpected find. Exert and pay two to draw a card. So a perilous power. Exert and pay another two to discard a card. Exert chosen character. What are we talking about here? Is that... Are these not both bad? I mean, wait, what? Isn't the magic mirror earlier like a four cost and this, right? Like pay two to draw a card. And I was like, oh, maybe. Well, six to draw a card is even worse. And to do the same thing and have to discard a card to exert a chosen character. Exerting a chosen character must be regarded as very high powered in Lorcana because it seems to be a high cost to pay. This seems really bad and if it's not then i'm really misreading it oh look both of them combined flotsam and jetsam and tangling eels for five five uh, shift you could discard two cards and play that you so you could play this on top of one of them so that's interesting and they are named flotsam and jetsam in the uh if need be so for like the this one gives them rush this one gives them evasive so if you had both of them out and you played one of this they'd get like you know evasive which could be good, but still, I think the whole Flotsam and Jetsam package seems bad altogether, so I don't think this is good. Tick Tock, a 4-7 with evasive. That's certainly not strong enough. Why? Like, what's the point? What are we doing with these evasive characters? The only thing that these are good for would be attacking other evasive characters. And I feel like a majority of the evasive characters I've seen with Amethyst are ones that have one lore. So I'd rather have an evasive character that has two lore so that I could quest with them and have a little bit more safety than normal. 
So I, maybe, you know, maybe I'm just reading it wrong and, and Amethyst is the evasive killer deck that the characters in, in this one are killing the questing deck that maybe another caller is. But does that make these characters good? Not really. And if you're not playing against that specific deck, then these evasive characters suck. So this is like, these would only be good against a very specific deck and that's not normally a good thing to have you don't want to be that specific like typecasting your deck because then you're if you're not playing that deck you have a lot of dead draws or you have a lot of cards that could be a stronger card but they're teched against a deck you're not playing and that's bad alice t alchemist oh my gosh i feel like if you were in britain and you called yourself a t alchemist like Probably nobody would bat their eyes and you'd probably open up some hipster shop and stuff like that. But if you call yourself like a tea alchemist in the United States, you'd probably get like battered. Uh, so this tea alchemist here is a 4-4 curiouser and curiouser. You can exert Alice here to exert a chosen opposing character and all other opposing characters with the same name. So that's we've seen we've seen this, right? We've seen exerting a chosen character as being like a strong play and potentially exerting other characters is certainly even stronger it might be something that doesn't happen too often unless somebody's playing a deck that just has loads of peter pans or something like that in it again it's one of those things where it's like oh you're doing this or you're doing this are you questing or are you exerting one of their characters and i feel like this is probably a reasonably strong card when this action seems to be highly regarded so this is probably a strong card here's another broom Magic Broom, a Dancing Duster. It's uninkable though, and it's a 3 3, which is pretty low. Power Clean. When you play this character, if you have a Sorcerer character in play, you may exert Chosen Opposing Character. They can't ready at the start of the next turn, so a bit stronger because they can't ready after you exert them, so it's even more of a shutdown. Uh, I feel like this is a weaker Broom because it's so expensive, and that action is not amazing. And then after you've done that action, I mean, this action may be amazing. It might be fine. But after you've done that action, you've got kind of this weak character and you've paid a lot for him. So I feel like there's not like a huge follow up with this character. And you have to have a sorcerer in play. So you might not even get to use this action, which makes this uh, even weaker, especially when we have characters that are doing this without having to have the specifics going on so seems iffy it is a broom so we have that broom synergy as well but i feel like this is maybe on the weaker side mama odi voice of wisdom uninkable three six here listen to your mama now whenever this character quests you may move up to two damage counters from your chosen character to chosen opposing character that seems pretty decent because at least it's when they quest you can do that so you can like consistently do that this cost might be a little bit too much for this stat line so honestly sometimes when i see these this kind of card i'm like is this going in the deck that i'm building with amethyst i'm not sure it is i think we've seen some stronger cards that are less than this and maybe you don't want to get this sometimes you gotta look at these uninkables be like do i want to get this stuck in my hand early on and i don't think you do i think i don't think this is such a strong play on six that you're like oh i can't wait till six i'm really going to turn it around when i play mama Odie because i've had this card stuck in my hand you might play her and now you've got a way to turn to quest to actually do her action so it might be just too slow of a play for too high of a cost here's our six mana isma isma was yisma a uh, four four scary beyond all reason is this one you could shift this one to the smaller ones this is probably what you want to do uh, cruel irony when you play this character shuffle another chosen character card into their player's deck that player draws two cards you are definitely doing this to your own character and bouncing your own character into your deck and drawing two cards, which is a great play. So another really good bounce card. And this one is like awesome to be able to draw two cards. If you can shift this, oh man, what a good card. This one seems really good. So yeah, I can imagine this card being in a lot of decks. I can't, honestly, what card does this not go into? I mean, as long as you can uh, shifting it is good a six cost four four with all this is probably still good because like drawing two cards is worth probably one and a half ink so you know if you put this at like say three ink then is the rest of this worth three ink by itself yeah probably a four four two two lore on questing i mean yeah you have to bounce one of your own characters into the deck not just into your hand which isn't great but 
not that big of a deal. And you can draw two cards, so yeah, it seems really good. Here's another Marshmallow. See, this guy's not a Titan. I was thinking, oh, is this a Titan? No, no not a Titan. Uninkable, five, uh, durable. Whenever this character is banished and challenged, you may return this card to your hand. So I feel like it's strong. This is definitely a character you're going to be challenging with a lot. So to be having maybe a consistent, strong card in your hand to keep playing out to do challenges. If you're not playing this in a, this is just like a control deck card though, because it's so expensive. It's not like you can just like get him out easily. He doesn't have a rush, so even if you do get him out, you're still gonna have to like wait a turn for his ink to dry before you can attack with him. So just doesn't seem super strong, but maybe in a deck where you can really control the board, and by the time you get him out, he could be a real pain in the butt because you're not gonna get rid of him, right? Without a non-banishing type of action. So interesting card. And we've seen some like we've seen some other ones like this that go back to your hand but none that were like really strong like this so feels like he can do some damage sven official ice deliverer a 5-7 nothing else that seems bad we are now on the sevens with an on a mystical majesty uh, could be shifted onto another uh, and you probably want to because seven uninkable is a lot for a four five exceptional power when you play this character except all opposing characters so that seems pretty good especially towards the end of the game when you're probably looking at either a lot of minions on the board or a lot of characters on their board or maybe like characters they aren't playing because they have passive abilities that you want exerted uh, and so certainly playing this on four would also be super strong because you'll be cheating out three mana and there's some been some three ink and there's been some other honors that you probably will play so there might be targets to actually shift on uh seems like a very good card got a genie here uh, another uninkable 5-5 five, five. phenomenal showman why this character is exerted opposing characters can't ready at the start of the turn oh that seems like a big shutdown character oh boy why do i keep right clicking yeah that seems really good not to man that's just let's imagine playing anna and then playing genie they you would stop what the opponent is doing entirely that would just make them skip a turn, which can be a really effective strategy. That seems really good. We have an Ursula Sea Witch Queen, a seven cost inkable four seven, but can be shifted on five. Now I am the ruler. Whenever this character quests, exert chosen character. That's really good. You'll listen to me. Other characters can't exert to sing songs. That's also good. I guess it could affect you yourself, but if you're playing this, you're probably not planning to sing anything, obviously. And the fact that you are going to regularly be exerting a character on their side that probably they don't want exerted seems also strong. It's been kind of, you know, a regular thing we've seen with Amethyst. And three lore, so this seems like a really strong seven cost. And if you can shift it at five, even stronger. Very strong at five. Jafar, some sweet card art. I think this is an enchanted one, so I'll never see this in person in from my entire life. Uh, the Striking Illusionist, 4-5, could be shifted on 5 here, is evasive, power beyond measure during your turn while this character is exerted. Whenever you draw a card, gain one lore. Wow, that could be that could be huge with your if your card draw engine is going on as long as you could, you know, you don't even have to, oh no, you do have to exert him. So you are putting him at risk. You could potentially ready up a huge card draw turn you know, we've seen, you know, play this character, draw two cards, play this action, draw three cards. You know, he could get, you know, four or five, maybe even more lore just for one. So if you, maybe if you get him down on five, that might be a bit more effective. I kind of wonder how strong this is because it is kind of late game. And is it strong enough that you're setting up a huge play just for this? Because I don't know what the maximum amount of lore is you could get on this, but it in my mind, it's not anything like game breaking. So it might, your probably average is probably three or four maybe. As if, but if he stays alive, then you know, you're gaining even more lore when you're drawing cards. So if he could stay alive for two turns, he could really run away with it, I think. But otherwise you might have to s set up for one turn, which might be kind of difficult to do. So I, s I can see a deck build around Jafar. So I imagine that he does see some play out there. Magica de Spell, the Midas Touch. Uh, uninkable for six, could be shifted for five. 
all whenever this character quests gain lore equal to the cost of one of your items in play so whew, i'd have to look at what the other items were i don't remember what the top item was was it four was it five i think the last one was it six <laughs> was it that one that you could choose between either drawing a card or exerting a character that was i said was way too expensive it might have been that one which i guess if that one was out and you had magica out there and she quested you could be getting a quick five or six lore if you have a really expensive item out there which could be a strategy that maybe people don't see coming and the fact that you could shift her out a bit early could be an interesting play an interesting tactic i, I could see her getting used got a madam mim purple dragon five seven well, four lore easy evasive when you play this character banish her or return another two chosen characters all right so you got to bounce two chosen characters which is probably not a big deal four lore is huge this the mem package seems great i don't think there's much else to say about it got a dr facilier agent provocateur it's a hard word to say on when you're not thinking about it uninkable four five three lore into the shadows whenever one of your characters is banished and challenging return okay so another one of these bounces for just an easy bounce right if you can get him out on five and then who knows you could just trade real quick and get those characters back in your hand just seems really good got an ursula power hungry on inkable two eight it's too easy when you play this character each opponent loses one lore you may draw a card for each one lore cost this way so that's just most of the time you're only playing one person so you'll make them lose one lore gain a card it's got a decent amount of lore itself i uh, wish you could shift it but oh well but it seems good you know a little bit of a disruption draw a card and you've got a, uh, you know an in-game strong lore card it's got huge health so might see some action on to our eight cards maleficent here's your first maleficent shift good lord so it could shift on six listen well all of you when you play this character for each of your characters name maleficent and play return a chosen opposing character to their hand but that doesn't seem amazing because it has to cost three or less so you might be putting a few things into their hand but probably not like a real game changer i guess it could waste a bit of their ink and it's a seven seven and you could shift it at six i think if you shift this at six it's really good um but you might just be bouncing a single card into their hand uh, some i don't know it seems iffy got an elsa spirit of winter four six shift six though deep freeze when you play this character exert up to choose chosen characters they can't so that seems good so they can't ready at the start of the attack next turn again another bit of a freeze a freeze action which can be really good especially when if you have so many characters doing this you're just shutting down the other player what they want to do i mean maybe making some very favorable tra trades so expensive you want to get this out at six so you, but you probably are playing the other elsas because they do have similar actions to this so it would be like a continuation of that sort of play so i would imagine you're usually shifting this so probably probably pretty good and then we're in the nine cost oh look at this crazy olaf nine cost six six uninkable for each exerted character opponents have in play you pay one ink less to play this character wow that could be massive if you've got that if that elsa hits loads of characters and exerts them this could like really drop in price and it's evasive so this this could be a huge mana cheat to get out and then it's really putting in some quest time if they don't have evasive answers to it i could see that being a play big time but boy it's it's not cheap right so how what's the average you're getting this down to six maybe at best so i think you're probably paying six for this a lot of the times this might get stuck in your hand so this oh boy i don't know this might be a terrible card it might be a good card <laughs> it's either terrible or really good second star to the right 10 cost synced but okay so multiple characters can sing chosen player draws five cards so you could make them draw five cards if they're running out of cards i guess um, but you're probably drawing five cards here yourself and gosh do you have how often do you have 10 cost out there for your characters i'm not sure i don't know this is a hard one to call it might be terrible it might be great you know i, I can see it be doable i think this is probably a good card and i think that's it I think that's all of them so i think this has been a lot clearer about probably what you're looking for with the amethyst deck you're probably looking to get these madam mims out to bounce other characters the ones that have really good actions when they're played like get lore or exert characters or draw cards 
or you know all those sorts of things uh, you can really see the possibilities of different decks being built and what you're really trying to do it's also got that broom package which i think is pretty solid and i think if there's any other brooms than any other decks perhaps that you could really build an even stronger broom deck but honestly the cards that were there seem to have some pretty good synergies with you know even with this mickey mouse sometimes the non-broom character you know <laughs> isn't very good like with the snow white you wouldn't play the snow white but this one the mickey mouse seems to be pretty solid and there's even a location for the brooms to make them even better so yeah i think you've got i feel like amethyst really has some clear things that you can do with with the cards and so obviously once we get to look at more decks we can see how amethyst will with this card draw engine combined with say you know yellow or aka okay, amber that didn't have a lot of card draw but you could mix those two and now you have um a tempo deck that has decent card draw so and obviously a more aggro deck is going to love having that card draw as well so i can really see some strong synergies with this deck uh, very interesting lots of lots of, well, look how big their is that their signature why did they write their signature so big and prominent in this card art um anyway yeah that's am amethyst aka purple so until next time in the next caller we get to uh, adios oh i had my webcam off the whole time awesome i love that